Assistant Sergeant Arms today, and a whole host of functionaries, guests, and contestants! I see you're already inspired and encouraged and excited. To help you even go to the next level of inspiration, please get ready for our inspirational speaker. Angela Simmons will come up. Let me tell you a little bit about Angela. She's an eight-month member of the Park Forest Toastmasters. They'll be celebrating their 60th birthday. Well done, Park Forest. All right. Excellent, Angela. Angela's a teacher, and she's preparing for her master's degree in teaching. Shout out for Angela. Angela enjoys being a Toastmaster. Any here, Harris? Anybody else? Here, here. Yeah. 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 And she has enjoyed the theme for her division, taking in many experiences time. And she is right on time. Please join me in welcoming up our speaker today for inspirational speech, Angela Simmons! that are coming up. So thank you for turning off those devices. Our next speaker is our South Division Governor. You know her as Cassandra Lee. I know her as coach, mentor, <laughs> and the diva of dialogue. Please welcome DTM Cassandra Lee. Angela Simmons. 
for taking in many experiences. Our South Division theme is Take In Many Experiences. And Angela heeded the call when I asked for her to do the inspirational moment. This was her first time doing it, yet she was able to walk through that with grace. And even as she said, I'm not, I'm not messed up, but she smiled and she reeled it in. Did you guys see her do her hands like that? And she used those hand gestures to get those nerves in order so she could stand firm in that space and take in many experiences. So, Madam Angela. Dialogue, none other than myself. 
Ahmed. Olalikin, Ahmed. Contestant number three. Barry, Mixon. Contestant number three. Barry, Mixon. Contestant number four. Kate, Webster. Contestant number four. Kate, Webster. Contestant number five. Elizabeth Stevenson. Contestant number five, Elizabeth Stevenson. And finally, contestant number six, Angela Eustis. Contestant number six, Angela Eustis. Now, in order for these fine and mighty contestants to actually compete as evaluation contestants, they need somebody to evaluate. And we have such an individual here this afternoon. I would like for everyone to please help me welcome Mr. Sanjeev Singh and his speech. Who is Sanjeev Singh? <laughs> Who is Sanjeev Singh? Mr. Sanjeev Singh. Then I figured out, you know what? 
because I go and talk about myself. Mm. Who is interested in talk, learning about me? So I say, you know what, let me change my pitch. And then when I started going to the customer, when I meet them face to face, Mr. Customer, share with me how you're using the software application. What are the challenges? What are some of the day-to-day -day pain points you're facing? And that's where I started talking. Get them to talk more and more. And then I know where I go and insert my solution. So I had to invest with my customers my time and their time before I can expect anything in return from them. So very important. You have to be interesting. You have to be interested before you expect back any, any kind of interest uh, from people we interact with. Second thing. Always have something interesting. Always have something good to share. <coughs> Why is that important? People are not interested in just, we have like enough of information bombarding, like you know, we have TV ads going on, you know, internet, phone calls. You need something unique to grab the attention. The attention span of each one of us is so short nowadays that you have to have really get that thing interesting before you get the attention back. So you have to have something good to share. I mean, you know, we wake up in the morning, go to bed in the night. So many interesting things we see around. Be interested and then share that story. Let me share a story about my life. You know, when I was in elementary school, that's when I decided that I want to be an engineer. You would wonder why? Why did you decide to be an engineer? So here's the story. You know, in my community, there was a guy, the most successful guy. Everybody would look up to him. And he was like, walk like a king, right? Everybody respects him. Everybody kind of gives him all the praise and love. And then I found out, you know what? He's an engineer. So I said to myself, hmm, if I grow up, if I become an engineer, I'll get the same kind of respect, same kind of love from my community. It's been 22 years since I graduated and I became an engineer. I'm still working on that research. <laughs> <laughs> so like how this story made, made you laugh. Have something interesting from our daily life to share with our friends, to share with people we have to come in touch with. And third and most important aspect, that's why we are all here when we are interested in others, when we have something good to say, say it well. We can't mumble. When we have something to say, say it well. And that's the purpose of we being part of this organization. This organization helps us tell our story in a more effective way, in a more intriguing way. And you can't tell the story like me, how I'm doing. And you are all listening to me because you have no choice, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, these are my fellow uh, evaluators. They're forced to listen to me. I can bet you if I go outside, they will not even look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to like build that expertise. You have to build that capability so that you are able to tell your story convincingly. Look at Iqbal. I mean, the moment I met him, I mean, he kind of grabs the attention. He's so polished, so presentable. Look at our man, Cassandra. I'm not telling you he done. <laughs> <laughs> our governor, Kelvin Gibbs. I mean, these are the people when you kind of look up to. You get inspired from them. The one thing I have seen here, the third aspect of getting, being interested, that how you tell yourself, how you tell your story. And that's why I'm being part of this organization, which is helping me bring a better out of me. And that's what it's going to do for all of us. All of us can be a better storyteller. All of us can be a better communicator. All of us can be a better leader in our personal life, in our profession. So to summarize, I would say, 
in my opinion, three things are most important for us to be interested. Be interested. Have something good to say. Have something interesting to say. And say it well. So one thing I want to tell you at this time, that if we all be part of this Toastmaster Club, we all work together to be our best, to bring out the best in ours. I promise you, the best thing will come in the lives of all of us.
But the younger one said, hey, you're going great, you're just cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it doesn't work in my family, but I, I still do it. Because I know in the subconscious mind, whatever I'm telling, just getting it. Parents in the audience, you know what he's talking about. Right? <laughs> yeah, those teenage and college years, you just want oh. to strangle them. But then they grow up at like 28 and 30, and they come back and they tell you, oh, Dad, yeah. Dad oh. you wear right. 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 That's the best three words you can ever You also have in here that you like to read inspirational books. So I'm going to couple this with something you shared with us earlier. You said that in your next life, you'd like to go back and help your community. If you got a grant, an undisclosed, unlimited amount of funds, where you could buy or you could purchase and distribute one significant inspirational book to every Toastmaster in District 30, what book would that be in life? I will, without any doubt, I will take a book from uh, Napoleon Hill. Think and grow rich. That book is so profound and so powerful. Yes. It tells you. I'm not saying it's easy to follow those directions, those principles, but if you follow those principles, success will come to your feet. That's right. That's a hard life. Evaluation contestant number one, Michael Gugis. Michael Gugis, evaluation contestant number one. <laughs> Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmaster, District Royalty, <laughs> and especially to Sanji. What a wonderful speech. I see that you are complying with our division theme of taking in many experiences. Excellent job. I think your, your strengths include have a very pleasant speaking voice, you speak with confidence, and your greatest strength of all is your great sense of humor. And it's great because you are the master of misdirection. You'll tell a story that if we see Life of Pi, if we see Slumdog Millionaire, and then suddenly veer, well, I'm not that actor that was in it. <laughs> that was excellent, and you did that throughout your speech. And you have great gestures as well. And analogies, and it's also excellent for you to give us a list Tell us each of those items, recap it, and end on a positive note. 
And I, I feel you met your goal of being interesting and showing us how we too can become interesting. So I think you did a very good job. However, I have a few slight suggestions that will allow you to go from very good to great. First of all, when you have a speech, if you've changed the speech title, let the person who's going to be introducing you know this in advance because I thought you were a little off your game when he came up with the unexpected title. Also, there were times you had effective pauses, but each time you would pause, you would look away, look down, as if gathering your thoughts, effectively pausing, but I feel you should maintain your eye contact throughout your speech and look at people in the audience, hold that eye contact, even while you're thinking and not speaking, but hold it so that no one loses your, your message at all. I would say that the, probably the best thing that you could possibly do would be to videotape your sessions and review them. In fact, I think that you'll find that by doing so and reviewing them that you'll pick up any little nuances that you have. For instance, you have a tendency to stay over on this side of the room. You don't necessarily have to move from side to side because that, become, that can become repetitive. You can simply turn your head, hold your eye contact for a complete thought, hold it, and just take a slow gaze so that you bring in everyone in the audience rather than quickly darting here and there. So I think that you accomplish your goal of being interesting. You held our interest, and you showed us how we can be interesting as well. <clears throat> Mr. Contest Master. Timers, may we have one minute of silence while the judges finish and complete the night. Speech evaluation contestant number two, Olalikin Ahmed. Olalikin Ahmed, speech evaluation contestant number two. Toastmasters and honored guests, and especially you, Sanjeev Sen. I will focus my evaluation on two aspects of your speech. The content of your speech and the delivery of your speech. Now, the content. How relevant were you to the audience? The only way we can find out is to ask the audience. So, fellow audience, was the speech relevant? Yes! Did you learn something from it? Yes! It was obvious that you thought about the audience when you wrote your speech. Now the delivery. 
You see, every great song wasn't great because of the lyrics alone. They were great because of how they were sung. So how effective was your delivery? There's something you did well. You used what we call the power of immediacy in the speech. What do I mean? Your ability to use eye contact, great body movement, appropriate and gestures. You bought the platform. So you satisfy each of those companies. Also, you use pathos in a speech. What do we mean? You prove credibility because you told us your personal stories. You knew what you were talking about. However, every great speech we're all reading. What could we have done to make this great speech even greater? I thought you should have used more ethos in your speech. Ethos? What do I mean by ethos? When you said that the life span in terms of human retention, give us some statistics. That shows that you have done your research. And that is what we call ethos in the speech. You should have provided us with more ethos in your speech. Also, I thought your conclusion was a little shaky. Give us something we can take home. A phrase that once we leave here, that is the only thing we will think about. Three things we should do. Three things that if you do it now, your life will change. Something we can think on. So when I get home, I can tell someone. So my dear, on your next speech, use the power of immediacy, pathos, ethos, and logos to his entirety, and your audience will run after you. Mr. Tony. Speech evaluation contestant number three, Barry Mixon. Barry Mixon, speech evaluation contestant number three. Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and of course, Sajid. You're, you spoke for eight minutes and 56 seconds, and I like what you did with your time. Because every time you come on this stage, you have a choice. You have to, you can give a speech or tell a story. And you today, sir, did both. You started out, out with how, who is Sanjeev? And then you changed it into how to be interested. So you've already became interesting because I was wondering how are you going to change the speech at the last minute and feel confident in doing it. It took you 50, 44 seconds to begin to open up with humor to bring the audience even closer to you. And I like the way you did that. 
You have an advantage because you have an accent. So people, are, when you speak from your part of the world, everything you say sounds majestic. You could say peanut butter, and the way you say it, it's like, wow, I want peanut butter. So already are interesting to the audience. I like the fact, it was interesting because a lot of people don't know that when you're an engineer, you tend to think in a very logical way. So you did both in your speech and in telling the story. You started out with a very formal, presentation telling us that there would be three things that you would dis discuss today. I was thinking, okay, this is the engineer. But then you took us into, you gave us an example, and then you told us your story <coughs> on how each one of those principles fit to you. My suggestion would be you understand stories. Take that a little bit further. Give us a little bit more of you. Because when I get home, I'm going to look at those movies and make sure that you're not really in it. <laughs> you seem a little bit too polished for me. So maybe in the credits, I'm like, that's Sajeev, he told us. He told us. <laughs> I think people are always, as you said, people are always more interested in what you have to say, your story. And once people started understanding your story, how did you get here? What did you do? What were the challenges that you had to experience? Not only what your customers would be drawn in, but you would tell a much more engaging story and you would be even more interesting. So instead of just telling principles, tell us a little bit more of you. I like the way you continue to go back and forth between telling a story and basically giving a speech. Don't be concerned with making sure that it's repeated over again. The, pe the customers, the audience, will begin to get what you're saying in the principles. You stated that, now just tell the rest of the story, and the rest will just come. I think you have a place in Hollywood or Bollywood <laughs> after doing this speech, and I look forward to many more speeches, whether here or in Bollywood, in the future. <laughs> Speech Evaluation Contestant number four, Kate Webster. Kate Webster, Speech Evaluation Contestant number four.
to be interesting. I learned quite a lot. And the organization, you had a be clear beginning, a clear middle, and a clear end. It was very easy to follow, and I liked how you summed everything up. I'm confident that with some looking at these three recommendations for delivery, that it will be a very strong speech. In terms of delivery, three areas that I would recommend you think about, you look at, maybe you take on or not. Take what you like and leave the rest is my motto. One was body movement. Two was looking at the space. And three was your eyes. First one, in terms of body movement, to make your body movement match the content of your speech adds a lot of quality and a lot of entertainment to the speech. What I saw was a bit backward and forward. So perhaps plant, move, plant, move, and plant. Therefore, we can follow you in your progression a little bit more. Second was taking up space. What I saw was right within here. This is a big room. I would have loved to have seen you taking up some more space. Also, the title of your speech is how to be interesting. So, be interesting in your body movement. Come into the audience in here. Have us have to follow you. Have us be interested in you and your delivery along with the content. Last was about your eyes. For the most part, you had strong eye contact looking out in the audience. I saw you looking right at me at times. I felt, I felt that. But there were also times when you were moving, when you were looking down. And when you looked down, I lost a little bit of confidence in what it was that you were saying. So perhaps have your eyes up. I'm confident that come up in spring in 2015, that by engaging in these three recommendations about delivery, because the content and organization was so strong, that it would be a very strong speech if you choose to go to one of the speech contests in the spring. And I would very much look forward to seeing it then. Thank you. Speech evaluation contestant number five, Elizabeth Stevenson. Elizabeth Stevenson, speech evaluation contestant number five. was 
how to organize a speech. Maybe it's only your second or third speech. You brought so much information. You had three succinct and specific points, and then you had a story for each and every one of those points. I'd like to ask you to please practice your segmentations. You had great, se great segues. However, unofficially timing you, you concluded at about eight minutes and completely finished your entire project at nine minutes. What does that say? That says that you had a lot of great information for us, that you worked through organizing it ahead of time, yet a couple of renditions of doing it over and over again would help you slice and dice to the most succinct pieces so that you could leave out some of the things that took you over your time period. You had some very basic things that I really enjoy. What? Humor. I always love to hear humor. I enjoy when you're going to give me something from your personal life. And you did that. You kept everyone's interest moving about in this very small area that we have. You moved here to the left and to the right. Possibly bring in larger motions, larger reaching out to the audience because you had eye contact, but your voice never changed. Your voice didn't get louder, and maybe the people in the back might have missed one of your jokes, and they were good. I sat in the front. <laughs> <laughs> I think you had some very basic skills that were excellent for this organizational speech. I would recommend that you practice a little more so that you can get yourself down to that seven minute and 30 seconds with all the information that you share with us. Because I'm looking to feel your next speech. Speech Evaluation Contestant number six, Angela Eustace. Angela Eustace, Speech Evaluation Contestant number six. should be interested in me, though. Did you ever experience that? <laughs> Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, and especially Sanjeev. We heard a little bit about how we could all learn to be more interesting this afternoon. Sanjeev, you gave us a delightful speech that had some amazing qualities to it. 
I'd like to share with you today some of the things that I found to be amazing in that speech and possibly offer some other suggestions so that you can really knock it out of the park the next time. One of the things that you just did was you started off your speech with an amazing opening and introduction that really captured people. When you ask a question of your audience and get them to raise their hand to participate, like who here has seen Slumdog Millionaire or Life of Pi? You engage the audience with you, and they're engaged right away. OK, where's he going with this? And then you lead in with a little joke, which kind of lightens the mood. When you do that, you capture the audience's attention. And your whole introduction told us what you were really going to be talking about. Now, we had your title that the contest master gave, the Who is Sanjeev Singh? And the title that you renamed it, How to Be Interesting. <coughs> So we knew exactly what we were going to hear based on that introduction. Then, you actually moved us into the body of your speech and told us very clearly with a wonderful transition of the three things you were going to tell us. And you told us those three things, and you gave us great examples of those three things. And then you concluded by repeating all of the things that you were going to tell us. Now, I was sitting there taking my notes going, oh boy, this guy's really good. What on earth can I come up with for some suggestions? But as Dale Carnegie once said, there is the speech that you rehearse, there's the speech that you give, and then there's the speech that you wish you gave on your way home. <laughs> <laughs> so even that amazing speech has just a few little points that I can offer you. There were a couple times where you did stumble, maybe missed a few words that you had intended to say, or didn't quite say something the way you wanted. That could have just been nerves. It may have been not quite enough rehearsal. Another thing that I noticed you did was any time you moved around the space, you looked down. Now, I did that as an example, OK. But <laughs> when you look down when you move, you're disconnecting from the audience for that period of time. So as you walk across to your new space, make eye contact. And you keep the audience. <coughs> but overall, you inspired, you gave us a very simple technique for how we can all be interested. Thank you. Mr. Kanye.
all the ballots have been collected. Excellent. Point of order, the timing report has not been collected. Mm -hmm. That was like the longest moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> Educational, entertaining, enlightening, wasn't that speech evaluation contest the bomb? Toastmaster, the law, the ballot collectors, and all the judges are doing their thing. I would like to call up our distinguished South Division governor. I would give a dialogue between the communication, the most dignified dignitary that I can think of. Please, <laughs> one throw in. Please help me welcome to stage the stage. Thank you. 